All right, going to do a scriptural comparison of the Catholic Church versus the early church. Because Roman Catholics, when you argue and debate with Roman Catholics, which is just pointless, by the way, it'll get you nowhere. But I've done it before, you know, obviously. So that's why I'm doing this video. Is that Roman Catholics and Jesuits so often love to cite, well, the early church believed this or the early church believed that. And first of all, I want to point out, what, whatever the early Christians believed or, does, or didn't believe does not determine anything, okay? Whenever Roman Catholics say, well, no, nobody believed that back in the first century, okay, what does that prove? Okay, let's, I'll give an example. Nobody believed dispensationalism back in the first century. Okay, well, even if that was true, which is not, but even if that was true, it just proves they're wrong about it back then too. That simple. But so, so whether or not they believed or didn't believe something does not prove it's biblical or not. Okay, because that, that's not the determination of what is biblical. The word of God is. But you see, because they rely on their human traditions over scripture, but another issue. But basically, Catholics have to say that they're the church Jesus Christ founded, and that the Jesuits and the Catholics will say, well, you know, your church is only just a recent thing. Our church goes back 2,000 years. Well, let's see about that. Let's look at the scriptures and see, and I'll be, this will be a multi-part multi video. But let's see how the Catholic church compares with the biblical church according to scripture, and how the biblical early church was not the same thing as the Roman Catholic church. And how they have many differences so first of all let's get into the examples i'm going to give around four different examples of how the early church would have actually been called heretics by the roman catholic church if the satanic cult that is roman catholicism was around back then so here's the first example first of all there were no there was no special priest class in the early church like there is in the catholic church okay let's go to the scriptures acts chapter 4 verse 36 to 37 turn there it says and Joseph, who was led by the apostles, was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus. Having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, what do you have going on there? Well, he's a Levite. What were the Levites? They were the Old Testament priest class. But notice how here, he's just like every other believer. He's not some kind of special exalted believer like the Roman Catholic priests are treated as. Because why? There's no special priest class in the, the biblical New Testament church, like there is in the Roman Catholic church. He was a Levite, but if he's saved, he's just like every other believer. He's not some kind of special, you know, exalted higher than everyone else. No, God's not a respecter of persons in that area. So that's one area where the Catholic church fails at being like the early church. Here's a second example. The early church believed that you had to believe the gospel before being baptized. This refutes the Catholic heresy of infant baptism since babies are not able to believe anything. Okay, Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Let's go there. Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Then Philip opened his mouth and began to preach, or began at the same time, and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Not good at reading on a computer. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me? To be baptized and philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and when they were come out of the when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the lord caught away philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing what do you got there? Well, the eunuch wants to get baptized, and he says, what's hindering me? What's stopping me from being baptized? And Philip tells him, well, you got to believe in Jesus Christ first. What? You can't get baptized before you believe the gospel, before you believe on Jesus Christ. Okay? Babies are not capable of believing anything. So therefore, they can't be baptized. Because they have they have, they have to consent, first of all. You know? They have to consent. They If they don't believe the gospel, which they're not able to, they are not, they are not scripturally baptized. It, all it is is just dunking water on them. And, it, and by the way, Catholics don't even scripturally baptize. They sprinkle them water. Where is that in scripture? Baptism is you dunk them in the water. You don't just sprinkle water on them. So even 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 if infant baptism was in the Bible, the Catholics wouldn't even, wouldn't even be doing it properly then. Because they don't baptize biblically. They sprinkle people and they call that baptism. But next point of how the Catholic Church fails at being like the early church is the early church taught against the concept of the Catholic Mass, eating flesh and drinking blood. And by the way, I was going to point this out too. You know, if you think you're eating Jesus Christ's flesh and blood, that's just creepy, to say the least. It's, it's blasphemous, first of all. But it's overall just really creepy when you really get down to it. But yeah, they, they taught against their, the Catholic Mass. Let's see the scriptures. Acts chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. Let's go there. Acts chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. 
For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye you keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. You're not supposed to be going drinking blood. But what do you do when you, when you think you're drinking the blood of Jesus Christ at Mass? Well, you're not abstaining from drinking blood. Like it says, you know, these are these are he says it says these are necessary things. And he says that you abstain from it, okay. But when you're observing in this pagan occult witchcraft ritual known as the Catholic Mass, uh, you're not being like the early church. You're being like the pagan cult that is Roman Catholicism, which is just simply a repackaging of the ancient Greek Roman pagan religion. That's all that it is. With they simply just Christianize Greco-Roman pagan religion. That's all that it is. But. Uh, next point, final point, the early church denied the Catholic heresy of baptismal regeneration. Acts chapter 10, verses 43 to 48. And by the way, too, I want to point this out. Baptismal regeneration is also pagan, too. I I'll be, I did a video on this, I think, where I showed the pagan origins of baptism, the concept of water, uh, having a part of your salvation or water washing away your sins. That's a pagan concept. It was taught by... Uh, Germanic pagans, Hindus believe it, where you go to the, the Ganges River and you basically have your sins washed away by bathing in that river. So yeah, uh, infant, or sorry, baptism regeneration, my cat is probably going to jump on the table. Baptismal regeneration is a pagan heresy. But let's go to the scriptures. Acts chapter 10 verses 43 to 48. To give him all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So he hands over to mission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they, my cat, Boa, stop interrupting me. Seriously, this is not funny. Okay, I'm going to pause the video because he is, he wants uh, attention. So, sorry about all that. Boa. All right, I do apologize for that. My cat, he just wants attention, and I'll be having to give it to him. So, thankfully, this is the last verse I'm going to be reading because he is wanting me to give him something. So, anyway, back to the scripture, Acts chapter ten, verses forty-three to forty-eight. To give him, to give, sorry, to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak, for, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which ha, which which have received the Holy Ghost as well as ye? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. What do you have here? Well, they received the Holy Ghost before baptism. So if baptism is part of salvation, I guess they were lost then. You got a problem there. All these, these these wicked devils, these heretics, like you got Watchman D, for example, who think that baptism somehow is what washes away your sins, or it has a part of that. Um, that's, that, that's uh, first of all, again, paganism. Second of all, it's wicked. Because here they have them receiving the Holy Ghost before baptism. You know, And, and sure, these, these wicked devils are going to try to explain it away somehow to justify their, their heresy of baptismal regeneration. But just reading the text... He says, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. He does not say whosoever believeth and is baptized shall receive shall receive the remission of sins. You know, and of course the writ verses out of context that do mention that kind of wording, which I'll, I'll be doing a video debunking that as well, so stay tuned. But they taught against baptismal regeneration, a Catholic heresy of baptismal regeneration, because they had the gift of the Holy Ghost before baptism. So those are just a few examples of how the Roman Catholic Church contradicts the early church in their beliefs and practices. So don't be deceived. Roman Catholicism, the Jesuits, all of them, they're just a satanic cult that is just a repackaging of Greco-Roman paganism. With Christian, like what they did was they took they took again pagan Greek Roman holidays and, and traditions and customs and just put Christian labels on them. They took they, they took Greco Roman temples and converted them into Catholic churches. So that's all that it is. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.